I am utterly baffled as to why it took so long to finally get this product. This is something that I expected to see seven years ago, and technically speaking, it was probably feasible at least that long ago. But you know what? I'm just gonna set all that aside because I'm just thrilled that it's finally here now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and as you can probably tell, today we're checking out a soundbar system, the Yamaha True X Bar 50A. Sorry, I gotta look because I can't memorize that name. Anyway, this portion of the system is not actually what I'm so excited about. What I'm excited about is right here. Wireless surround speakers. But Caleb, you say, wireless surround speakers have existed for a really long time. Yes, they have, but these are battery powered. But Caleb, you say, wireless battery powered surround speakers have existed for quite some time. Yes, they have, but these are different. These are also Bluetooth speakers. Yeah, makes sense, right? I mean, why hasn't this product existed before? Look, here's the deal in case you don't follow soundbars like I do. For quite a while now, we've had soundbar surround systems that came with wireless surround speakers. The addition of a rechargeable battery to power them is more recent. Uh, JBL has been selling a soundbar that did that for a few years now. But for whatever reason, no major manufacturer, at least not as far as I'm aware, has ever taken those wireless battery powered surround speakers and armed them with Bluetooth so that you could take them out of your living room and use them in your bedroom or your bathroom or at the campsite or at the beach or wherever you might wanna use a Bluetooth speaker. It seems really obvious, doesn't it? And yet, I, I, I did a little bit of research before I started this video just to make sure maybe I didn't miss a product. And if there is another system out there that does what, well, what these speakers do, uh, I haven't found it. A lot of sound bars have Bluetooth in the description, but what they're referring to is your ability to stream uh, audio via Bluetooth to the sound bar and the rest of the system as a whole. None of them, as far as I'm aware, let you take your surround speakers, one or both of them, and tote them wherever you want and just use them as a regular old Bluetooth speaker. I mean, I'm all about utility. If a piece of technology can not be a unitasker, I think that's an Alton Brown term, uh, that is all the better for me. So yeah, I know that surround speakers for a lot of people are kind of a treat. Uh, I even know folks that kind of hide them until they actually want to use them and then they bring them out. Well, these, you, you can hide them if you want to, or you can use them in other areas of your house. Pretty simple, right? So at this point, all the soundbar has to do is not suck, and I'm gonna be pretty excited about it. Something tells me that it's going to go beyond just not sucking. I think I should give it a little bit more credit before we even unbox it, because Yamaha has not made a terrible soundbar ever, as far as I can recall. Every one that I've tested has been at least decent, and at best, absolutely stunning. Uh, this one has a lot of the fun stuff that you would hope to see on the box. Um, it supports Spotify Connect and Apple AirPlay, uh, which means that it's gonna accept music over Wi-Fi and not just Bluetooth. It also supports Amazon You Know Who, um, along with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, so you can connect devices to the soundbar and then run a signal up to your TV if that's how you prefer to do things. It also supports ARC and eARC so that you can just run everything into your TV and then dump an audio signal down to the soundbar. I'm sure there are some other features that I'm missing, but we're gonna discover those in just a minute. For now, I need to unbox this thing, which let's be honest, unboxing soundbars is maybe my least favorite thing to do because I mean, I get it. This packaging probably makes sense for a soundbar, but this whole armchair style get up is just uh, with all these tabs and everything, it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, so we'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, you can see some of my frustration, but, oh, um, almost forgot one thing, just a second. Ow, 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 ankles. Uh, these, wireless charging pads for the surround speakers uh, so that the speakers can just sit on them and run off of uh, power uh, if you can plug them in. Uh, or as I said before, you can uh, remove them and run them off batteries. All right, let's start unboxing this thing and uh, see how it sounds. Because like I said before, as long as it's decent, this is a must buy kind of thing for me. Okay, so it looks like USB is what powers these guys. I must assume that's what's in this 
It's not just manuals, the cable, no. Cable's not in here? Okay. So maybe the cables are in the speaker boxes. Let's hope so. Otherwise I shall feel very put out. Is that a quote from um, Die Hard? Otherwise I shall feel very put out. I'll find out soon. Almost time to watch Die Hard because as we all know, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Cool, so it looks like it's just like a one button press thing that kind of converts it from being a surround speaker to a solo speaker. One thing I've not figured out yet, and I will, is whether or not you can join the two surround speakers as a stereo pair uh, of Bluetooth speakers. And here is that power cable that I was hoping to find out. Unfortunately, it is USB-A to USB-C. That's a little unnecessary bulk in this day and age. I don't know, what do you guys think? Are we ready to just like ditch USB-A finally? I know we all have a ton of wall warts that, you know, power USB-A, but like, I kind of feel like we can move on. All right, I've got to be honest, these are a little bit smaller than I thought uh, they were going to be. Maybe it's because the box, you know, yeah, I'm sorry, but check out that box. So look, that speaker looks way bigger on the box than um, it does in real life. Still, you know, we'll check the price on these again, but I think for the price that you pay and for their flexibility and utility, probably gonna be all right. Um, I do not, however, expect massive amounts of surround audio uh, from these, though I think they're gonna be mostly just kind of backfill. I will say, though, that uh, if this idea takes off and a bunch of people buy this Yamaha system, I would like to see Yamaha make a bigger surround speaker. Just take the, take the whole premise and boost it to be a bigger surround speaker. I mean, they're cute. Like if you're wanting a surround speaker um, that isn't gonna call a lot of attention to itself and would be easy to hide, uh, they're certainly that. You know what? Never put it past Yamaha or Bose or even JBL to be able to, you know, manage to cram a lot of punch out of the speaker of a smaller size. All right, so that's the surround speakers and the charging plates. Oh, this is my least favorite part of everything. So let's see. Don't cut yourself, Caleb. Mm. This ridiculous box needs to be able to open from the bottom. You know, honestly, if I didn't need to repack this whole thing, I'd probably just tear it apart. There we go. When in doubt, muscle it out. What do we have here? Uh, mounting plates for keyhole style mount. One power cable for the sub, one for the sound bar, and a little remote. Now let's see if we can get to the main event. What have I missed here? God, did I, have I mentioned how much I hate these things? I feel like people won't return a sound bar just because it's such a hassle. I mean, TVs are easier to deal with than this. All right, here's our sub. Let's see what we're working with here. Hmm. All right, driver's there. I'll look up the specs later, but I'm gonna say that is, hmm, I'm gonna guess a five and a quarter inch, maybe six. We'll take a look here in a second. A USB port for firmware updates. Firmware update your sub. What a world we live in. Let's go ahead and set you over here for now. Build quality is respectable. Uh, the, the cabinetry bites back. Um, it's got kind of a, anthracite sort of coating on the outside, uh, anti-fingerprint, which is nice, uh, so it's not gloss black. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels like you can't really remove the speaker grill cloth, but it's side firing, the subwoofer is, and what else, forward ported. But it's slim, you know? You can slide this off to the side of the entertainment center and it doesn't call a ton of attention to itself. All right. Soundbar time. Will it be smaller than it looks in the box? You 
go over there. Um, no, it's about what I expected. Just rip it off like a kid at Christmas, right? Yeah, all right, so there's our sound bar. We'll get some pretty B-roll shots of it. Um, it does have up firing uh, drivers, very small ones. Simple little command interface at the very top. And then on the back, looks like we've got one HDMI in and one out, which doubles as the ARC port. Um, and it is eARC compliant. There's also an ethernet jack. Uh, in case you don't want to connect it via Wi-Fi, um, there is an optical port in here. Interesting that they're still including an optical cable, but not an HDMI cable. I think it's time to convert, honestly. And then, uh, yeah, real simple keyhole style mounting system. So a couple of screws in drywall anchors and you're set. It's not that heavy. Um, it's respectively heavy though. Uh, like it's, it's gonna be fine for keyhole mounting, but it's got enough heft to it that I, I feel like this is not a piece of junk. And that's really, really important. Uh, also really nice thick padding on the bottom uh, to isolate it from your media cabinet if you're placing it right on the media cabinet as we will be doing today. All right, well at this point, I think uh, it's time to get this plugged in, powered up, um, connected. I'm sure there's an app, so we'll wanna see what's up with the app. And, uh, and, and then, yeah, I'm gonna light this thing up and get some first impressions. It's not gonna be a full review, uh, but I can tell a lot in about five minutes, honestly, on a soundbar like this. Um, again, we're just kind of trying to gauge what the general product quality is um, and uh, see how these surround speakers sound as Bluetooth speakers on their own. Gonna be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Okay, so I did manage to get everything set up uh, and I got to experience the system for a little while. I have some good news to share, but first some uh, clarifications and criticisms. The clarification would be around the pricing uh, of the system and the fact that you kind of have to piece it together. So the surround speakers, the True X1A surround speakers are sold separately. They cost about $150 right now as I'm recording this video, which gut check, uh, given their size, Feel like they should be 100 bucks each instead of 150 each uh, but a surround pair is going to add 300 to the price of the soundbar and subwoofer which comes in right now at about 600 so right there you're up to 900 for this system which is fairly pricey then there's the charging pads i think that the model number is cct 1a for those we'll have a link down below in the description the charging pads are $25 each. And I feel that uh, maybe just don't get them. Uh, it's an extra 50 bucks. If you like the idea of having pads for the speakers to charge on, great. I kind of thought, you know, it'd be really neat to just sort of have them be on their charging stations in the surround position. But when your USB cable is only about, uh, you know, three feet long or so, and also not very pliable, it's gonna be really difficult to plug in those charging pads where you would wanna place your surround speakers. I mean, this is just not long enough. And also you need a little adapter so that you can plug it into an outlet. I would probably just skip them and use the, the cable to charge them when you need to because they do have about a 12 hour uh, battery life. Obviously the louder you play them, they're going, that, that time will go down. I think, you know, nine to 10 hours is probably reasonable. Uh, at almost any volume. Um, but that's a great battery life. That's that's good news, right? Like I imagine that you could take one of these speakers out uh, and use it while you barbecue dinner and then put it into the surround system and watch a movie and you'd still have plenty of juice left to watch the football game the next day. So that's, that's pretty great. Um, in terms of setup, I feel like um, it could have been a little bit more intuitive. I'm used to turning on surround speakers in a soundbar and having everything just sort of uh, connect automatically. That is not the case here. Uh, to be fair, there is a QR code on one of the many pieces of paper inside the surround speaker that will direct you to online instructions uh, for registering the surround speakers with the soundbar. And once you find those instructions, it's relatively easy, but I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I'll take ownership for this, my fault, I thought 
that the key was to download the soundbar controller app from Yamaha, which for whatever reason would not install on my phone. However, it did install on my iPad. And once I got it on there, I realized I really don't need, you don't need the app at all. I mean, it's a fun interface, but really you don't need it. The remote control uh, gives you all the control that you need. But I will say that once the system was finally connected, it worked flawlessly. Uh, the, the speakers as Bluetooth speakers. Let's talk about that first. That was intuitive. I mean, you know, when you turn the speaker on, it's already in Bluetooth pairing mode. I was able to instantly connect with my phone. Uh, I had to listen using music and I'd say it sounds good enough for a $100 Bluetooth speaker. Maybe not a $150 Bluetooth speaker. Uh, the bass is surprisingly good for a speaker of that size, and I think that's because it's got passive radiators on at least one side, if not two. Kind of hard to tell by looking, but by listening, it sounded like it had a couple of bass radiators in there, so that plumps up the low end. Uh, it does indeed give a bigger sound than you would expect from such a small speaker. My complaint, though, was as a Bluetooth speaker, the treble was a little bit crispy, and I mean like, some folks are gonna like that, but it was a little bit on the aggressive side. It reminds me of some Yamaha receivers from like 15 to 20 years ago. But overall, not bad, perfectly. I mean, I think they'd sound great outside. It was just inside at close range, a little shrill for my liking, but to my delight, when they're involved with the whole system as a surround speaker, uh, I got none of that. In fact, the, the fidelity from the soundbar is, Excellent, it's fantastic. Uh, and I definitely think it's right in line with a $600 soundbar and subwoofer combo. No shrill highs, plenty of detail and plenty of clarity in the treble region, but not shrill or harsh, which I appreciate quite a bit. The subwoofer is definitely quality uh, for a bundle system like this. The system does rely quite a bit on the subwoofer for all of the low mids and uh, even part of the mid range, but it doesn't call attention to itself so long as you don't put it in a corner where it's gonna get naturally boomy and easier to localize. Uh, it gets pretty deep, um, it's fairly tight, and it's not a cheap, boomy, you know, home theater in a box subwoofer. I was really, really pleased with it. Overall, the system sounded great. Now, I think these surround speakers are gonna be best at close range. I don't know that you would wanna position them much further than, say, five to six feet. Uh, they're just too small to have the presence that you would need. Sure, you'll hear surround cues there, but you're not gonna get the enveloping surround uh, effect that you would wanna get if they're that far away. Keep them close. As for the Atmos effect from the system, uh, not a whole lot of dome of sound or top-down sound uh, happening, at least not in this particular space. Uh, then again, we also have ridiculously high ceilings with sound absorption panels up there. Uh, so we'll try it in a different spot and see if that changes anything. Like I said, this is not a full review, so I'm not really in a position to uh, compare this soundbar system uh, to others in its price class. I do think it's a little on the expensive side, however, I will say that the novelty or at least the uniqueness and the utility of having surround speakers that can function as independent Bluetooth speakers goes a long way with me. I think it's, uh, I don't know. I think that's something that we should have had a long time ago. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't know why we had to wait this long to get it. Um, but I would highly recommend this system for anybody who likes the idea of being able to repurpose the surround speakers in their home theater system and use them for something else. It's a great idea and it works really, really well here. Overall, I'm gonna have to give this system probably somewhere between a 7.5 and an eight, honestly. And that's taking everything into consideration, the cost, the fidelity, the ease of use, and the functionality and features that come with it. It's slim, it's sleek, it's non-intrusive, it offers a very big sound. Subwoofer is uh, kind of a shining star uh, of this show, actually, which goes a long way for me as well. Uh, so yeah, that's my take on the Yamaha True X system. I think anybody who needs a sleek, compact home theater system with a little extra utility, 100% needs to check this out. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of this not quite review? We can do this more with some other products that definitely deserve some attention, but maybe don't need a super deep dive. Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.